Hello and welcome to the Canary Brief. I am not wearing pants. Today, the UK government announced that it had failed to meet its testing target of 100,000 tests per day by the end of April. So like, why is testing important and why is it important that we miss the target? Way back in the 16th of March, the General Secretary of the World Health Organization gave a press conference and he tells everyone, You cannot fight a fire blindfolded and we cannot stop this pandemic if we don't know who is infected. We have a simple message for all countries. Test, test, test. Test every suspected case. If they, ha if they test positive, isolate them and find out who they have been in close contact with up to two days before they developed symptoms and test those people too. And so the smart countries do what he says. You test everyone, you find people with it, you find out who they saw and you isolate them. Simple. And that has been the scientific advice since this point, since way, way back, back in March. But by the end of March, the UK is still not following the strategy. And if we look around this time, the UK at this point is testing fewer people per million of our population than pretty much any developed country on earth. Come the 2nd of April, it's reaching fever pitch now. Everyone is like, what the fuck? So under pressure, the health secretary, Matt Hancock, makes this massive promise, right? At this point, Britain is testing like a few thousand people a day. Germany is already testing 50,000 people a day. So there is a big, big gap. Matt Hancock comes out, bold as brass on the 2nd, and promises... I am now setting the goal of 100,000 tests per day by the end of this month. So he's really clear, right? This is, this is 1,000 tests per day being carried out in the UK by the end of April. But the thing is, a couple of weeks in, it's already looking like, Matt, let's get real, this is never gonna happen. All of a sudden, these goalposts start moving. So first of all, what, what they try and do is switch from tests carried out to something they're referring to as the capacity to test. Well, the capacity to test is actually above target. Uh, as you say, 51,000 capacity, uh, and that's been going up by about 10,000 a day. And the plan was always to build the capacity, build the systems, and then ramp up the capacity. Um, and then, then exactly as you say, the question is how we then ensure that people can get access to that capacity. But of course, for capacity to count, you know, capacity means the amount we can carry out. There does need to be a reasonable way of having people be able to use that capacity, otherwise it's pointless. Like, my bank account has the capacity for a billion pounds, but I can't go and buy a yacht right now, because there's not actually a billion pounds in my bank account. So then Matt Hancock announces he's got a real brilliant plan. Everything's fine. This was always the plan to increase capacity, but now we've got a solution. We're going to bring the people to the capacity. You know you've got capacity for 50, 51, 55,000 tests to be taken, but actually only 22,000 are happening. There's going to be a huge surge all of a sudden. And, and let's face it, the, the, the infrastructure so far hasn't coped particularly well. Well, the infrastructure's coped absolutely fine. Uh, it's that there haven't been as many people coming forward as we've had capacity for. So the infrastructure That's hasn't... That's because they can't get to the sites. That's because it's too far away. It's because they can't get away from work. That's because the system to get them there hasn't been easy enough for them to follow. No, well, this is why we've put in a new, um, a new system that people can directly book instead of having to go through their employer. Precisely, you're precisely right. How well did that go? Well... They ran out of test swabs in two minutes and the site crashed in a couple of hours. And so now they needed a new line. And that line is... <laughs> I, and I love this one. Victoria MP George Freeman comes out and he says, Great leaders set great goals. JFK and the Apollo moonshot. Atlee and the NHS. 
America landed on the moon. Atlee built the NHS. These things happened. Atlee never said, um, you know, let's build the NHS and then just open one hospital. So what did Matt Hancock actually achieve? So back on March 25th, the UK was running at fewer than a thousand tests per million people per day. And you can see other nations like Germany were already up well over 6,000. So let's kind of stick on the UK and Germany as a comparison because they've actually got similar population numbers overall and they were also at a very similar stage of technological and social development. So they're very good kind of countries to, to pair together. So then we flash forward to the end of April and what are those numbers doing? Well, the UK is now on to just over 12,000 tests, but Germany is over 30,000. Although the UK has moved forward, the UK is still only where Germany was at, maybe the first week of April. And the reason testing is also important, the only way of getting out of lockdown safely is to do exactly what the Director General of the WHO said from the very beginning. Mass testing, contact tracing, isolating. Those are the three steps. And here's Angela Merkel to explain why. Und wir haben Modellbetrachtungen gemacht, wenn wir sind jetzt ungefähr bei diesem Reproduktionsfaktor 1, also einer steckt einen an, der natürlich auch nicht, das kann ich immer nur für eine Infektionskette sagen, ob einer einen ansteckt, und das ist dann ein Mittelwert, aber es ist ungefähr einer steckt einen an. Schon wenn wir darauf kommen, dass jeder 1,1 Menschen ansteckt, dann sind wir im Oktober wieder an der Leistungsfähigkeit unseres Gesundheitssystems mit den angenommenen Intensivbetten. Wenn wir 1,2, also jeder steckt 20 Prozent mehr, 1,2 an, also von fünf Menschen steckt einer zwei an und vier ein. Dann ähm, kommen wir im Juli schon an die, Ent an die Belastungsgrenze unseres Gesundheitssystems und bei 1,3, das hört sich nicht viel, wir kommen von vier, fünf Ansteckungen, drei bis fünf Ansteckungen. 1,3 sind wir im Juni an der Belastungsgrenze unseres äh, Gesundheitssystems. Daran sehen Sie also, in welch kleinem Spielraum wir uns aufhalten. Und die ganze Entwicklung basiert darauf, dass wir davon ausgehen, dass wir eine Infektionszahl haben, die wir überblicken können, die wir nachverfolgen können und dass wir mehr Schutzkonzepte haben und durch die mehr Schutzkonzepte auch mehr Lockerungen machen können. Aber es ist ein dünnes Eis, wie Herr Tschentscher gesagt hat, oder eine fragile Situation oder ein, ein wirklich eine Situation, in der Vorsicht äh, das Gebot ist. And so that's it. If you're sick of lockdown, if you are struggling, if you are angry, the best thing you can do is start lobbying your MP for this approach. Mass testing, contact tracing and isolation because that's where the pressure needs to come from. Stop talking about exit strategies. Stop talking about all that kind of stuff. You need to make sure those three things happen because if those three things ain't happening, mate, we ain't never getting out of lockdown.